JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for August the 27th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar rebounded and traded higher against all but two of the other major currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session Friday. It lost some ground only against the Japanese yen, while it was found virtually unchanged against the euro. The greenback uh, gained the most uh, versus the Canadian dollar, the British pound and the Aussie in that order. Now, the strengthening of the US dollar and the yen combined with the weakening of the risk linked currencies suggests, suggests that the markets may have turned to risk off uh, trading yesterday. Indeed, uh, taking a look at uh, the performance of the equity world, we see that major EU and US indices were a sea of uh, red, but today in Asia, although Japan's Nikkei 225 and Hong Kong's Hang Seng traded lower, China Shanghai Composite and South Korea's KOSPI edged higher. In any case, the risk appetite was hit by a bomb blast outside the Kabul airport in Afghanistan, as well as by hoggish remarks by some Fed policymakers. In Afghanistan, a suicide uh, bomb attack resulted in the death of more than 100 people, while with regards to the Fed, Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan said that quantitative easing, taper, uh, quantitative easing tapering should start in October or shortly thereafter, suggesting that a formal announcement may have to be made at the September gathering. Those remarks of his, those remarks of his came in contrast with last Friday's comments when he noted that he may reconsider his hoggish stance uh, should the virus weigh on, uh, on the economic recovery. St. Louis Fed President James Bullard and Kansas City Fed President Esther George were also on the hoggish side, with Bullard saying that the Fed should start trimming its purchases soon and end the program by early next year. All three of them downplayed the impact of the Delta variant, with George saying that her business contacts were telling her that the economic effects remained limited. This may have come as a surprise to those expecting a more dovish approach following Kaplan's remarks uh, last uh, Friday, as well as the third consecutive slowdown in the US PMIs. Today, the financial world is likely to lock gaze on the Fed's annual economic symposium and the speech by Fed Chief Powell. Traditionally, the event takes place at uh, Jackson Hall, uh, Wyoming, but uh, due to the coronavirus uh, pandemic, it will be held online this year as well, like uh, last year. Investors will be eager to see whether Powell will deliver a clear roadmap uh, with regards to the Fed's uh, tapering plans. Despite yesterday's hoggish ho remarks by Kaplan, Bullard and George, according to market chatter, some participants still anticipate a more cautious approach by Powell. Perhaps he will refrain from delivering a clear timeline or he may suggest a slower pace in monthly reductions. For example, he could hint that once tapering begins, the monthly reductions would be 10 billion US dollars worth of purchases. So given that the Fed currently buys 120 billion US dollars worth of assets per month, this would mean that the process will last a full year, which means uh, later interest rate uh, hikes as well. Now, if indeed Powell sounds more dovish than Kaplan, Bullard and George, equities are likely to rebound again, while the US dollar is likely to pull back. However, this may not be a trend reversal, f uh, a trend reversal uh, for the greenback rather than a correction as a relatively strong uh, upcoming employment and inflation data may raise speculation that despite Powell's dovish stance, the majority of his colleagues may support an earlier action. 
As for the equities, it would be hard to call for a bearish reversal in case uh, the future developments were under a quantitative, ease, uh, quantitative easing tapering very soon. After all, we saw Wall Street hitting fresh records even when expectations around the matter were brought forth. Yes, at first we could experience a downside correction, but some participants may rush in uh, to take advantage of the low interest rates environment of the low interest rate environment for as long as it lasts, which could again result in another leg north. What's more, although improving data will point to earlier and faster tightening, they will also point to an, to an improving uh, economic environment, which may also allow some uh, stock buying. Now, as for the rest of today's events, besides uh, Fed uh, Chief Powell's uh, Jackson Hole speech, the, we, we get the US personal income and spending numbers for July alongside the core PCE index for the month. Personal income is anticipated to have accelerated marginally to 0.2% month over month from 0.1%, while the spending rate is expected to have fallen to 0.3% from 1%. As for the core PC index, no forecasts available. The preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for August is also due to be released, and the forecast points to a rise to 70.9 from 70.2. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the, in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.